Now I'm getting ready to slot a fretboard for a classical guitar, but before I do that, I thought I could use this as a, an opportunity to impart a little bit of knowledge on anybody who might want to hear it, or if not knowledge, at least some interesting bit of trivia. Um, when I first started building guitars, when I built my first guitar in like whatever it was, 1977 maybe, um, I knew very, very little about guitar building and uh, I didn't even understand why the frets got closer together as you moved up the fretboard. I just thought people did it because that's how it had always been done and it looked cool. I had no knowledge of of tempered scales and and intonation and and uh, all those important things. So when I cut my first fretboard with a handsaw, I just took measurements of fret spaces off of a guitar that I owned and probably hacked out the fret slots <laughs> within maybe a I'd hopefully a, an eighth of an inch of where they were supposed to be. Um, needless to say, I don't imagine the intonation was real good on that guitar. And eventually I, I did learn about how frets get located where they are on a fretboard. Um, it used to be known as the rule of 18, 18 being a, a constant for, for a mathematical formula. So this, this, uh, the formula that is used is a way of calculating fret spots or fret slot locations so that you have a, an equal tempered scale. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people who know a lot more about tempered scales than I do, but Basically, an equal tempered scale gives you the best compromise in pitches going up and down the fretboard. So the way it works is you start with a, a desired scale length, say 25 inches. And that's the distance from the nut at one end of the guitar to the saddle at the other end of the guitar. You take that 25 inches and divide it, not by 18, but by 17.835. And you wind up with some number around, I don't know, an inch and a half. And that tells you where the first fret should be. So then you take the remaining, you started with 25, you subtract an inch and a half. So you take the remaining 23 and a half inches, divide that again by 17.835 that tells you where the second fret should be. Um, you just keep going like that until you've gotten all of the fret slots located. Uh, there are people who instead of 17.835 use 17.817 and I really haven't read about this in a long time but to the best of my knowledge most people who could discern a difference thought the 17.835 slotting constant was uh, a little bit better. So anyway, that's how frets get located where they're supposed to go on a fretboard. The old rule of 18, probably it would just be too cumbersome to say the rule of 17.835. Um, now the way I slot fretboards, I usually keep one of each common fret scale in stock that I buy from a supplier who has used a CNC machine to very accurately locate and slot a board with exactly the scale length that I want. Um, then I, I will uh, slice up my own pieces of ebony and get them the thickness I want and I attach the, the pre-slotted CNC precise board to my piece of ebony and I'll use my table saw to duplicate where the slots are 
in the new board. So that's what I'm going to show now. So this is a piece of ebony that I've sanded while well, scraped and then sanded down to a quarter inch thickness. And this is my factory made fretboard. This one has a 24.75 inch scale, which is what I want for the guitar that I'm building. So I'm going to stick the two of them together with double sided tape. What a great invention this stuff is. Okay, so that's stuck down. Now I've got this nice carriage thing that I made that goes in the the miter fence slots on my table saw with no side to side play at all and I have this special little fret slotting saw blade it's only six inches in diameter and it's made to cut a a kerf of about twenty-four thousandths of an inch which is what it's what uh, most fret wire requires. So what I do I have a little indexing pin. It's actually a <laughs> an exacto knife blade. I stick the indexing pin in this slot in my fixture and then bring it down well first at the zero fret. So that locks everything in place. It won't wiggle back and forth and I will make a pass and cut the zero fret. Then I lift up the pin, slide it to the first position, and cut the first fret. And so forth all the way down until I've got all the frets that I want. So here goes. Okay, so here's my new fretboard, exactly duplicating the slot locations of the fretboard that was factory made. Um, the reason I do this is because it saves me money. I mean, it, it costs about twice as much to have the, the fretboard already slotted, and it only takes a couple minutes, so... I just do it myself. Now on this one, there's going to be a, a radius to it, so I'll have to sand that into the, the new ebony fretboard, but that'll, uh, that'll be something that I do without the camera showing. Anyway, there you go. The rule of 18.